I'm a relatively new booktuber. I've been around about three months and I'm working on building up my books. Today, I have my biggest book haul yet and I have a feeling we're gonna fill this shelf. Hi, my name's B. Welcome to my channel, Mama Needs to Read Romance, because nobody in these books is gonna feel the need to bend my nice bookmarks. Why? <laughs> pretty new to the romance genre, but I'm really enjoying it. Gotta have my happy ending. Just so you know how I do this, I only buy used books. So it's things I get at the library book sales, used bookstores, and even free little libraries. I don't pay much for any books. The greatest price you're gonna see for any of these books is $6. When I pick out books at book sales or whatever, I always use my Goodreads app and I scan the book first to see if it's worth my time. Unless it's an author or a series I'm really excited about, I only pick up the book if it's a 4.0 or above. I'm gonna start with four books by four different romance authors I've never read, but I'm really excited to try. The first of which, is Beverly Jenkins, Destiny's Surrender. This is book two of the Destiny series and it got a 4.18 on Goodreads. It's a historical romance that takes place on a ranch and there's a marriage of convenience, but apparently some sizzling passions as well. So I'm excited to try Beverly Jenkins out. I've heard nothing but fabulous things. Sabrina Jeffries is another author I've heard a lot about, but I've never actually read her. Obviously this is a historical romance based on this gorgeous cover. This is part of Duke Dynasty number four and it got a 3.95 on Goodreads. Goodreads, which is pretty good. There's mystery surrounding murder, as well as a fake engagement that apparently turns real. I'm excited. So many booktubers I love really like Kerrigan Burn. So when I saw this, I had to scoop it up. It's the second Kerrigan Burn I own. This is part of De the Devil You Know series number two, and it got a 3.88 on Goodreads. I've heard though that a theme in her books are dark pasts and just more serious themes. And so I'm a little nervous about trying her out, but I think I can probably handle it. If you've ever been to my channel before, you know that I'm pretty obsessed with Lisa Kleypas. And I've heard two other names re frequently mentioned to me as if you like Lisa Kleypas, then you'd really like two other authors. One is Tessa Dare, who I still haven't tried yet, but I just got one of her books through Audible on sale. And that was in my last book haul. But then I just got this one, 10 Ways to Be Adored When Landing a Lord. And it is Love By, it's part of the Love By Number series number two, and it got a 3.88 on Goodreads. I've heard that Sarah McLean writes amazing heroes and I love a good sweet hero. And so I'm really excited to try her out and check out the step back. I love it. Beautiful dress. Is that his leg? Huh. That looks uncomfortable. <laughs> Julie Garwood. I read the first chapter of one of her other books for my try a chapter challenge of pirate romance. And it was really intriguing. It wasn't the one I wound up going with, but it still looked really good. And I've heard incredible things about this author. This book got a 4.22 on Goodreads. So rather intriguing. This book is set in 1066. We're talking like the Normans, the Saxons. This is not a time period I've read ever. So I am really excited to give this a whirl. Speaking of other authors, I have one up and I haven't tried yet because I had one more. <laughs> This is Catherine Coulter, The Countess. It's set in the Gothic period, which I picked this up at the pool. It was on the, the shelf. Nobody had even touched it. And so I swapped out a book I accidentally bought two of. It's part of the Regency series. It's number one and it got a 3.71. And it's actually a rewrite by Catherine Coulter because she wanted to make it more Gothic as opposed to Regency era. I was super intrigued by that. They even talked about wanting to make the step back look Gothic. And I haven't seen one that looks like this. And I thought, oh my heavens, 3.71, who cares? Get out of here. I'm going to try this book. Speaking of gorgeous step backs, I've got two more for you. Did I buy these books because of the step backs? Yes, I did. But they also look really good. <laughs> so, and I got them for like 50 cents. So we don't have to be up in arms about it, right? <laughs> So this one got a 4.01. It's called Under the Desert Moon. And I mean, look at the raised writing. You know, it's so funny. I never cared about this stuff until I started watching booktubers talking about it. And I'm totally drinking the Kool-Aid now. I'm like, oh, it's raised, it's glossy, it's golden, it's beautiful. And then check out the step back. Are you ready? Is this not gorgeous? I love the moonlight on the water and her outfit with the hair. Oh my gosh, the flower. And I believe that's a cowboy hat that he's pouring water on her leg. Look at this. 
gorgeous. This is also historical Western. I did a ton of contemporary Western last month for my Try a Chapter Challenge. Historical I haven't done yet, and they're talking stagecoaches here. We've got a woman who pretends to be a school marm, but she's actually a sharpshooter, and he is a cowboy. This is in Santa Fe, by the way, and he has a Ute, I believe it's pronounced U-T-E, Native American companion who he is close, close with. Oh, and look, there's his gun, I guess, hanging on the thing hanging on the branch. So I've shown you Mary Jo Putney step backs in the past. And it's funny, I've had people comment like, Mary Jo Putney step backs are just the best. Now this book is rated only 3.84. It is Petals in the Storm. It's part of the Fallen Angel series. It's number three. I'm telling you though, this step back. And I got this book for 25 cents at a library book sale. So I mean, come on. But look, this is gorgeous. Look at this. I mean, I'm loving the clothing. I'm loving the garden in the background. There's dancing going on. I love this ball. And then who put the barcode there? Who did that? I would like to know. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Because you can tell there's, there's a hand right there. There's something gorgeous behind this barcode. People, come on. Come on. Speaking of Westerns, I did get two more Westerns. One's contemporary and one is historical. Now this one I talked about in my Try a Chapter Challenge for Western Romance. I didn't wind up picking it, but it really does look like a good story. And I got this for 50 cents. It is a 4.16 on Goodreads. It's emotional. They've made a movie out of it with Clint Eastwood's son, whose name I cannot remember, but he's quite handsome. And I read a rom-com recently where they kept referencing the good looks of the main character as being whatever Eastwood. What is his first name? <laughs> I cannot remember, but he's handsome. Anyway, The Longest Ride, which is by the way, life, in case you're wondering what The Longest Ride is. Here's an author I've heard a ton about. When I was researching Western romance novels, she came up a million times and she's got great reviews. This one particularly is 4.24 on Goodreads. It's number three of the McKetrick series, Secondhand Bride, and it's a historical Western. I do wanna try historical Westerns at some point, And when I do, she will absolutely be one of the authors that I try. So I'm very excited to have grabbed this copy for 50 cents. And now for something a little bit different. I grabbed this, I read it, and I could not not buy this. It's only 3.78 on Goodreads, but I was so intrigued. I promise I'm not gonna just redo the backs of books in here, but I have to read this. What if hidden in an old attic chest, Jane Austen's memoirs were discovered after hundreds of years? What if those pages revealed the untold story of a life-changing love affair? That's the premise behind this spellbinding novel, which delves into the secrets of Jane Austen's life, giving us this untold insight into her mind and heart. And it talks about how she falls for someone who has such faith in her that she actually decides to rewrite Sense and Sensibility. I was just too intrigued by this not to get it. And so I'm really interested to give this a whirl and see what it's like. Here's another super random one. I couldn't help myself. Down with Love. This movie is one of my favorites. Whenever I'm not feeling well, I pop this in. It's like the 60s on steroids. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous and it's super fun. There's music and it's it's just so cute. This book only got a 3.28 though. I mean, but again, I got it for 50 cents. So, but it's even got pictures from the movie inside. And so if, if you liked this movie at all, if you haven't seen it, see if you can find it and watch it. It's just so good. It'll make you laugh and smile. I'm going to read this and see what I think. If you've seen some of my fantasy videos, you are aware that I am into Sarah J. Mass. Although I still haven't been able to grab myself a copy of A Court and Wings and Ruin, I did snatch the next novella, A Court of Frost and Starlight. So this is like book 3.5 in the series. Now this one only got a 3.80, whereas all the rest of them are at least four stars and above. So I'm really excited to try this one. I'm really excited that I own it. Okay. Brown Eyed Girl, The Travis's number four of four. This got a 3.67 on Goodreads. I nabbed it because it was contemporary Lisa Kleypas and I was very excited about it. Since I purchased this book though, I have read books one and two of The Travis's. And if you saw my video recapping my reads in August, you will know that I pretty much detested books one and two. I can't imagine a world while I will where I will end up reading this. I am most likely going to be donating it, but I'm gonna peruse it and see. You never know. Or maybe you do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have done it. We have filled my top shelf. And I only have one more shelf. This is gonna be a problem. So speaking again of romance booktubers who I love and authors that they seem to love, we've got four books by Stephanie Lawrence. I own two of hers already and I have not found one I'm jiving 
really well with. I did Lord of the Privateers for my Tri Chapter Challenge for Pirate Romance. I started her Bastion Club series with The Lady Chosen, but I only got about 100 pages into that. I do have two more books from Bastion Club because I would really like to try these out. This is book number four at 4.09 on Goodreads. This one scored a 4.16 on Goodreads and it is number eight in the series. Before we move on though, I want to show you these beautiful step backs. I love the colors and the fabric. Just gorgeous in the way the sun hits. Beautiful. It almost looks like ocean waves. Lovely. And then for this one, beautiful. I love cherry blossoms. I don't know if that's what these are, but that's what it's giving me vibes of. The other two books I have for her are part of the Sinster series. We've got A Rogue's Proposal and A Secret Love. This is book four and this is book five. Out of 32? And the 32nd was published this year, so there could easily be more. This one is a 4.08 on Goodreads, and this one is a 4.17 on Goodreads. These are all very highly rated. Let's, before we move on though, check out the one with the step back. I love the colors. Looks like we're really going garden in these. Speaking of Stephanie Lawrence, I actually got an anthology that I'm super excited about and it looks like it's set in winter, so I think I'm gonna read it this winter. It's called It Happened One Night. It's four authors. Stephanie Lawrence, Mary Ballow, Jackie D'Alessandro, I hope I said that right, and Candace Hearn. What they've done is they've each imagined what would happen if a woman staying in an inn encountered a, a man. That sounds really silly. I told you I wasn't gonna read you the back of any more books, but I'm gonna read you the inside here, the step back. This is beautiful, by the way. Oh my gosh. Does this not give winter vibes or what? Okay, I'm going to read this. I'm very sorry. Four romantic stories by four best-selling authors. When they were young, he was her protector. Now they meet again and she's ready to be his lover. So that's one of them. Also, after a stagecoach accident, a beautiful lady is rescued by a charismatic and charming stranger, her husband. What? The third retelling of this. 10 years ago, they said goodbye, but she still haunts his dreams and his face fantasies. And the fourth retelling of this particular story, his was a life of heroism, hers a life of scandal, but neither forgot the passion that once burned between them. So I'm really excited by this. I think it's going to be really cool. Like I said, I am obsessed with Lisa Kleypas. I love her so much. And I got four more books to add to my collection. I grabbed this. This was, it really wasn't 442. I don't know. They resold it again. And I love this. Look at the, there's, can you tell that even, this is raised, it's like a, I thought someone had written on it, like over it, but it's like holiday uh, berries and leaves underneath, it's raised, it's just beautiful. And there's a step back. There's Rafe Bowman and Hannah, and I'm, I'm sure they're inside the library in Marcus and Lillian's home in Hampshire, which is just so perfect. I now have all of the Hathaway's books because I got, there's two books each in here. And then I got this Mind Till Midnight, which I was so excited by. This is the first in the Hathaway's series and I just loved it. I just rated this as one of my top 10 books of the whole summer. And yeah, it's 4.08 on Goodreads. So I'm excited that I finally own it. I got another Ravenel's book for 75 cents. I was so excited chasing Cassandra. This is number six in the series. Now all I need is number two, Marrying Winterborn, and number three, Devil in Spring. I have the library books because I'm doing my Summer with Lisa Kleypas challenge right now. So I've got all the books, but two of them are library books. Let's look at the step back. We've got Cassandra and Tom Severin. Could that dress be any more beautiful? Oh, it looks like they're at this gorgeous winter ball. Ah, oh, I can't wait to read this. It's coming up. I also got a book by Lisa Kleypas in the Capitol Theater series. I've never read a Capitol Theater series book before. This is number two and it got a 3.96 on Goodreads. So I'm excited to try this out and I'm gonna read the books in order. So if I don't buy the first one before then, I'm gonna check it out from the library. <laughs> but I just realized you can't really see as I'm adding the books on the second shelf. So there they are. Anyway, talking about authors I'm obsessed with. I love Lisa Kleypas, but if I'm going Highlander, my favorite for now is Holoquin and I actually got 
three books by her at some various used book sales. And one is Tamed by a Highlander. I love this one. This is book three of the Children of the Mist series. It got a 4.07 on Goodreads. I love the Children of the Mist series so much. And this is the only one I own, but you better believe I'm on the lookout for the other three. I also nabbed number five of the McGregor's Highland Airs series. This I'm going to be reading at Christmas time. It's a Highlander's Christmas Kiss. It's 3.81 on Goodreads and I couldn't be more excited about it. I was also able to grab number seven, Laird of the Black Isle, which is a 4.21 on Goodreads. That is so high. And again, like I just love her so much and I love her Highlander books. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this. I'm trying to read one of her Highland Airs books per month until I get through the entire series. I do want to try some other Highland authors. So I grabbed two other ones that are very highly rated. This first one is uh, number three in the Scots and Swords series of three books. It got a 4.58 on Goodreads. And then I realized there were only 259 reviews. So that may be part of why it's scored so high, but it looks really intriguing and I'm excited about trying it. I also grabbed Truly Madly Plaid by Eliza Knight. And this got a 4.13 on Goodreads. It's number two out of three books in a series for Prince Charlie's Angels, like Charlie's Angels, but it's Prince Charlie's Angels. Again, this got very, very highly rated. So I'm really excited to try it. And even the back, I guess it's like a step back. Oh, sorry. It can't focus for some reason, but it's a great picture. It's like a step back. So I got a lot more Highlander books and they're all in the same series by Lindsay Sands. I have never read Lindsay Sands before. I've got a lot of the Highland Bride series. So let's talk a little bit about these. They're all highly rated. I don't know a lot about Lindsay Sands though. I get the impression that there's a lot of steaminess and maybe not a lot of plot. Like I don't get that it's overly complicated, but from what I understand, there's not a lot going on plot wise. So I got all these for like 25 to 50 cents. So if I don't love the style of writing, it's not that big a deal. But I thought I really want to try to get this series and see. So because it might be a lot of fun and they're all super highly rated. So here we go. We've got Number one in the Highland Bride series out of 11 books, this is a 3.90, looks good. Number two, a 3.97 to marry a Scottish Laird. This one has a step back. Something I've noticed about these step backs, it's like it's more interesting on the cover than the step back, I will say. This is a beautiful landscape and I'm guessing this is Heather. You know, and here's a lock, of course, right? Um, and I love her dress, it's beautiful. But you're going to start seeing what I'm talking about in just a minute in terms of less interesting step backs than covers. I don't have number three, but I do have number four. Let's talk about this cover, please. Falling for the Highlander. And when I think falling, I'm thinking of, you know, somebody needs to help him with this. It is falling. <laughs> that may be why this is the title. Because, hmm, okay. I mean, I'm not complaining, but the poor thing needs a better fit for his kilt. <laughs> When I saw this cover the first time, I was like, oh my gosh. This is number four of the series. It got a 3.94 on Goodreads. I also don't have a number five, which is Surrender to the Highlander. And that one got a 4.05. So I'm on the lookout for number five. Number six with 4.04 on Goodreads, The Highlander's Promise. And the promise is to have fabulous abs. So this is the cover. And then here's the step back. Huh, I see seagulls and water. I mean, it's pretty. But of course, there's a ton of stuff on top of it. So it kind of takes me out of it. It's an underwhelming step back at best, I feel. More, more going on in the cover here. Verse 7, 3.96 on Goodreads, the wrong Highlander. If he's the wrong Highlander, I was she looking for a dry Highlander or an unattractive or nerdy looking Highlander? I don't know. What's the wrong Highlander? <laughs> here we go again. Step back. Waterfall. Flowers. Okay. Number eight, hunting for a Highlander. And I'm guessing she's hunting for this Highlander because I mean, look at him. Look at the castle in the background. This is a pretty cool cover. This got 4.09 on Goodreads. And again, look at the, I don't know. I mean, the castle, it doesn't look that great. I can't describe it. And I don't understand why they're doing just scenery for step backs, but okay. And I am missing number nine, which is a Highland treasure, which was 4.11 on Goodreads. So I'm going to be on the lookout for that one. I don't have number 11, but I do have number 10, Highland Wolf. Highland Wolf, again, we're, we're getting close to showing some tush here. So lucky that the water was as high as it was. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm just curious to see what these books are like. I'm very, we'll see. I'm wondering how deep these are based on the covers. I know I shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but mm, I'm wondering. I have two more Lindsay Sands that are not part of the Highland Bride series. I've got Lady in Disguise, and the sticker for 50 cents was on his face and I took it off and then look what it did to his face. Man, who did that? Who put the sticker on the face? And then I've also got The Chase. This is number three of three. It got a 4.05, looks good. And then this one is a standalone. It got a 3.87. So we shall see just how magical it is. Still continuing with the Highlander thing, but now we're talking paranormal as well. I have had so many of my viewers tell me to check out Karen Marie moaning moaning. Interesting. Okay. I didn't think about that until I just said it out loud. But anyway, she does Werewolf Highlanders. And people have said it's very good. I got this at a book sale and I was like, okay, I'm excited to try this. And I'd like to try it in October because werewolves, Halloween, all that good stuff. So this is number six of the Highlanders series. It's just called the Highlanders. And it got a 4.30 on Goodreads. So we're werewolves. We're Highlanders. That's all I need to know. <laughs> We've also got, yes, another Lindsay Sands Highlander book with Hannah Howell, who I know is an author in her own right of romance novels. This got a 4.20 on Goodreads, but this is not a werewolf. This is a vampire. So we got vampire Highlanders and werewolf Highlanders. What will we see next? Cressley Cole. I really enjoyed her pirate book that I read for my Tri Chapter Challenge of Pirate Romance. So when I saw another Immortals After Dark book, because a lot of people really like that series, there's 18 books. I have the fifth one and now I have the sixth one. And this one got a 4.31 on Goodreads. So I am really eager to try this. Okay, I am so excited. I have been trying to collect all of the Bridgerton novels and all of the Rokesby novels, which are the Bridgerton prequels. Well, I finally I finally completed my set. I got book four and book seven. This is a 3.97 on Goodreads. This is a 4.01. This spring, I am planning on reading all of these, watching the first two seasons, and putting it all up on YouTube. I also wanted to show you this one has a step back and I thought this was lovely. As I said, I got the other two Rokesby's. Now I have all four. I've got First Comes Scandals, which is the last book in the series, the fourth, at, and it's got a 3.82 on Goodreads. This one got a 4.02 on Goodreads, and this is number three in the series. I already have Because of Miss Bridgerton, which is number one, and The Girl with the Make-Believe Husband, which is number two. I saw another Julia Quinn that I didn't have. I had to nab it up. This is part of the Smythe Smith Quartet, which I have heard a lot of good things about. This only got a 3.66 on Goodreads, so I'm a little wary about it, but I've heard good things about the series, so I'm going to try it. Christy of Christy Reads A Lot would be proud because I have quite a few Lorraine Heath here. Actually, maybe she wouldn't be proud. She's got way more. Does she say how many in her video, her Lorraine Heath video, how many Lorraine Heath books she has? I need to know. I can't remember. I'm gonna start with her most recent series, I believe. I am not an expert on Lorraine Heath, but I want to be. This is uh, number one of the Once Upon a Dukedom series. It got a 3.94. It was published last year, Scoundrel of My Heart. Very excited. And I also have number two, which is The Duchess Hunt. It was published in, 19, in 2021 as well. And the only one I don't have, I mean, there could be more beyond three because the third one was published this year. The Return of the Duke, which got a 4.05 on Goodreads. So I am excited to try this. So there are six books in her Sins for All season series, and I have four of the six. I am very excited. I'm missing numbers one and two, but I do have number three, The Scoundrel in Her Bed with a 3.94 on Goodreads. I have The Duchess in His Bed, which got a 3.66 on Goodreads. Number five at 3.92 on Goodreads. The Earl Takes a Fancy. And the last one, Beauty Tempts the Beast, number six of six at 4.17 on Goodreads. You would think I got all these at the same time, but I collected them over months. So this one is number one of the London's Greatest Lovers series, and it got a 3.80 on Goodreads. I am only missing number two, which is The Pleasures of a Notorious Gentleman. This is book three of three, Waking Up with the Duke, and it got a 4.03 on Goodreads. I have five more books, and this is how much space I have left. Is this gonna fit? If I, oh, it's gonna fit! It's 
going to fit. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> it's gonna just fit. So I've been trying to collect more of Eloisa James's The Wilds of Lindo Castle. I already have My Last Duchess, which is the prequel, considered 0.05 or 0.5 of the series. This is book one, Wild in Love. And check out the step back. Gorgeous. I love it. This got a 3.81 on Goodreads. I have book two, which is Too Wild to Wed, and book three, Born to be Wild. Okay, so I don't have book four, but I do have book five, Say Yes to the Duke, and check out this step back. It's a more close-up than I'm used to seeing, and I love the detail. Number six, The Wilds of Lindo Castle at 4.05, Wild Child. Now my books are falling. <laughs> I mentioned in my last book haul video that I fell in love with romance through Eloisa James's Desperate Duchesses and Desperate Duchesses by the numbers. And I wanted to have them for myself. I have two more now. I already have Desperate Duchesses number one and Affair Before Christmas number two. Now I have number three, which is Duchess by Night. It got a 3.92 on Goodreads. And here is a beautiful step back. Love it. And I have book number nine, Seven Minutes in Heaven, which also has a lovely step back. See, I feel like if they're gonna do scenery, this is how it's done. I think these look much better than the Lindsay Sands Highlander ones, but that's just my opinion. These books were all terrific. I love them. There's nine books in the series. So this is the last. It got a 3.95 on Goodreads. So now you can watch me try to make these all fit on my shelf. These are my last two. Let's take a look. Yes. So, Honey, I'm gonna need another shelf! Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're doing well. I hope you love all the books you have and any more that you find. Let me know if you have any thoughts on any of these. Until next time, thanks so much. Take care. Bye!